confused. Someone just told me there's a movie by Johnny Depp, a new one. I mean, with Johnny Depp in it. No, nobody saw it. Just curious. Anyway, uh, okay, so we have two classes left today and one more. Uh, our final exam is on the 29th, and it's a Wednesday, no, Tuesday, Tuesday the 29th. Okay, and it's sixth period, same, same as, I don't know what room it is, they didn't announce that. And you can check all your final exam schedules uh, if you go to the academic webpage. And uh, there's a, it says examinations on the left. And if you look there, you can find uh, the list of all the exams. Okay, now today we will have a, uh, a quiz on today's material. So I'm going to give you a lecture and then ask you to do a few problems at, on a quiz. Okay, so that means you need to pay attention. Well, unless you already know the material. So, um, oh. okay, does anybody have any questions before we start? Okay, so you have all of these homework assignments. These are the homework assignments that we've had. And so this is what the, uh, the final exam will be on these. And as I told you before, I'll just copy some of the problems in your homework and put them on a paper, piece of paper and ask you to do them. So I won't give you anything that's not in here. Of course, there's a lot in here. Um, and uh, today, we're not going to do this one, so I don't think we'll have time. So I'll reschedule this for a later date. Um, but uh, we're going to start on integrals today, and then we'll have a quiz on that uh, today. Okay? So let's look at this one called uh, Integrals Part 1, Indefinite.
Okay, so here is what's called an integral. My, my okay, here, here is what's called an integral. And this is something that we haven't seen this symbol before. Uh, but you can at least recognize the function that we're talking about here. So can anybody guess what the fun what the I mean can anybody recognize the function that we're considering here? It's this. This is the function. Okay, so the rest of it is a special notation for integral, but we but the function that we're working on is here. How about in this one? Where is the function that we're working on? It's here, right? Okay, so the rest of it is notation for the integral, but this is the function, so negative 27x. Okay, how about here? Where is the function that we're working on? It's here, right? x squared minus 9x. This and this are the sign for this new thing that we want to learn about called the integral. Okay? You get it? So far? All right, so what, what does this mean, the integral of this, for example? Okay, well, let's do one that's a little bit easier than that to start out with. So let's consider this one. Okay, so what's the function that I'm working on here? x cubed, right? Okay, now, the question, the, the, this, this, well, first of all, how do you read this? You say, this is called the integral of x cubed. The integral of x cubed. Okay? So, now, what does that mean, the integral of x cubed? Uh, it means, I want to know, the answer is going to be a function. The answer is going to be a function. Just like if I asked you, What's the derivative of this? The answer would be a function, right? What, what would the answer be if I said, what's the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared, right? So the, the answer is a function, right? Right? It's not a number, it's a function. Okay, and the same thing here. The answer is going to be a function, not a number. Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing is, what, what function is it going to be? So the, it's going to be the function whose derivative is equal to this. It's going to be the function whose derivative is equal to this. So I want you to think, you know, kind of guess of a fun guess, a, guess a function which when you take its derivative will give you x cubed. So like it wouldn't be x squared because what's the derivative of x squared? 2x and that's not this. So I want you to guess what function can you take, if, if you take its derivative, will give you x cubed. Now, the, now one thing to think about is usually when you take a derivative, the power goes down, right? Right? So it's going to be what? It's going to be a higher power than, than 3, right? So it's probably going to be something x to the fourth, right? So let's just guess, x to the fourth. Okay, so what's the derivative of x to the fourth? For x cubed, so that wasn't right. Our guess wasn't right because I want to get x cubed, not 4x cubed. Okay, but what's wrong? Yeah, that's right. But what's wrong? This is too big by a factor of 4, right? This is too big by a factor of 4, right? Because, uh, uh, so, so what can I do to bring it down to size? Instead of saying the answer was, uh, the, uh, this is the function, how about if I said this? It was too big by a factor of 4, so what if I do that? Now take the derivative of that, what do you get? You get 4x cubed over 4, right? Which is what? x cubed, which is what I wanted to get. So what's the answer to this? x to the fourth over four. Because, why? If I take the derivative of this, I get what? This part here. Okay? Is this clear? How about if I asked you this one? Okay, so we're, first of all, what's the function that we're considering here? x squared. 
And how, second of all, how do we read this? The integral of x squared, okay? And what kind of uh, thing is the answer going to be? Is it going to be a number or a function? It's going to be a function. Now we have to figure out what function it is, and it's going to be the function whose derivative equals, x, equals this. So again, if you take derivatives, usually the power gets smaller, so it's probably going to be like x cubed, or maybe x to the fourth or something, but maybe it's going to be just x cubed, just like that. So what is the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared. So that wasn't exactly right. But this is too big by a factor of what? 3. So how about if I consider this? Now what's the derivative of that? which is x squared. So that's the answer. So uh, x cubed over 3 is the answer because the derivative of that is this. So we write uh, x cubed over 3. Let's try another one. How about if I asked you, what's the integral of x to the fifth? OK, let me ask you again. What's the function that we're thinking about here? x to the fifth, right? That's the function we're operating on. How do we read this? The integral of x to the fifth. What kind of answer is it going to be? Is it going to be a number or a function? It's going to be a function. And what function is it going to be? It's going to be the function whose derivative is x to the fifth. Again, the power is probably going to have to be higher than x to the fifth because when you take the derivative, the power usually goes down. So the, maybe x to the sixth would work, okay? So then we say, does it work? Take the derivative of x to the sixth, what do you get? Six x to the fifth, not x to the fifth. So it's too big again by a factor of six. So therefore we should divide by six. So the answer is x to the sixth over six. And what does this mean? This means the derivative of this is this. What does this mean? So you can just read it backwards, right? You can say, if this equals this, that means what? That the derivative of this equals this. You can just read this backwards, right? If the integral of this equals this, that means what? The derivative of this equals that. Okay, so another word for integral actually is antiderivative. Antiderivative, and that's kind of obvious why it's called antiderivative, right? Okay, is that clear? Okay, now we see that this pattern is kind of, maybe we see a pattern here. Do you see a pattern here? Sort of, right? In this case, when it was x to the sixth, what was the answer? I'm sorry, when it was x to the fifth, what was the answer? x to the sixth over six. In this case, what was the answer? When it was x to the third, what was the answer? x to the four over four. In this case, it was x squared, what was the answer? x to the third over 3. So if this is the question, what's the answer going to be? x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay, so everyone agree? Now how about if we have this one? Okay, so now what is the function that we're uh, working on? 5x squared, right? Okay, so what's the answer going to be? Well, I know it's gonna, it should be a higher power, so it should be x cubed. Okay, so maybe it's x cubed. But now that doesn't work because that's 3x squared, so something's not right. We have to fix it. What is it? What was it? If it was just x squared, what was the answer? If it was just x squared, it was what? This, right? So I'll tell you. Then you can just multiply this one by 5, and you'll get the right answer. So let's check that. Just multiply this by 5, and what do you get? So take the derivative of this, what do you get? The threes cancel, right? 
So you get 5x squared, right? So you can just, if you have a constant time z, you can just multiply. You can just use the same rule that we used and then multiply the constant. Okay? All right? And how about if I ask you for this? Then you can just do it piece by piece. So what's it going to be? x cubed over 3 plus x to the fourth over 4. Okay, everyone get it? Okay, how about this one? How about that one? So again, what's the question? What's the function whose derivative is e to the x? Just e to the x, right? Right? Because what? If you take the derivative of e to the x, you get e to the x. So it's not a higher power in this case, but that's a very peculiar one, right? e to the x is very peculiar. Okay? How about this one? Same rule works. The same rule works. So what's the answer? x to the 1 half plus 1 over 1 plus 1 half. Okay? So that still works. Okay? Any questions? Okay, now, I made a mistake though. Sort of, not really, but kind of. What was the answer to this? Right? Why? Because the derivative of this is this, right? But how about if I had said this? Would that be wrong? No, it would be right, right? Because the derivative of this is of this also is this, right? And how about if I had said that? It would still be right. And how about if I had said that? It'd still be right, right? So what's the what's the answer actually? We'd say the answer is this. Sorry. Plus any constant c. Okay, because whenever you take the derivative of the constant part, you just get zero. Is this clear? Okay, now so so how many answers are there to, well, let's take this one. How about if I ask you this one? Okay, we didn't do that one yet. What's the answer to that? Or what's one answer to that? All right, that's one answer, right? Uh, how about if I changed it to that? Now what's the answer? Then I can just erase this too, right? Because I can multiply by two. Okay, so that's the answer, right? That's one answer. But this is also an answer, right? But this is also an answer, right? Okay, and so on, right? So there's not just one an there's not just one function. Right, so we, there are many functions, right? So they, in the math they call it a family of functions. Okay, it's a family of functions. And, uh, but these functions are not just completely di all different. They're all basically the same except for the difference of a constant. So in terms of the graphs of these functions, it might be interesting just to think about that, you know, is to think about all of them together, you know, what do their graphs look like? So what do their graphs look like? So we said this could be just zero, so what does that look like? 
parabola, right? And how about if I add one to it, what does that look like? That's the same shape, just shifted up by one. So where's that here? And how about if I made it with two? What's that? Again, the same shape, just shifted up by two. So they're all different functions, but they're certainly related. Right? So it's a kind of family of functions they talk about. And the only difference is the constant. So therefore, actually the word for this is not just the integral of, of 2x. So I, I've been saying the integral of 2x, but to be really act to be to use the right word, this is called the indefinite integral. And the reason it's called indefinite is because there's not just one answer. Okay, so this is called the indefinite integral. Okay, because there are many answers, but they're all very related. But still, it's called the indefinite integral. Or it's also called the antiderivative. Okay, any question about this? How about, uh, did we do... Yeah, we did that. Anybody know this one? Now this one, let's try and use that rule that we have. I erased it. The rule that you told me. So if I use that rule, I should first of all rewrite this like this. Right? And then what do I do? If I use that rule, what would I get? I'd add one. So x, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and divide by 0, uh-oh, no good, right? So that rule doesn't seem to make sense in this case. So that rule works every time except when we have negative 1 here. But you know the answer to this anyway. You already know, you don't need that rule. Because what am I asking for? I'm asking for what function gives me, uh, what's the, the uh, what function's derivative is this? You know that, supposedly. You did it in your homework. What is it? Everybody remember? What? Right. Don't you remember the derivative of ln of x was 1 over x? So, that's what this is asking. It's saying, what function has this as its derivative? So the answer is ln of x. So that rule works except when that exponent is negative 1. When that exponent is negative 1, it doesn't work, but this is true. Okay? Any questions about that? Okay, so what is this called again? The indefinite interval, what's another word for it? The antiderivative. Okay? Okay, and how about another one? How about uh, this one? I think the rule will work here, actually, also. Um, so we're asking what functions derivative is 5. So I think that rule will still work, but I don't have an x here, so I have to do what? Put that there. Now I think the rule will work. So what do I get? x to the 1 over 1 times 5, which is 5x. Does it work? Is the derivative of 5x equal to 5? Yeah, so it still works. Okay? Okay, so you've done... Okay, now you can basically do all the problems in this section. Let's see, is that true? Except now, except they have some word problems at the end. So let's go to the word problems. So you can do all of these. You know how to do all of these. Okay, it doesn't matter if you have a U or an X. It's the same idea. Or a V. So you can do all of these quickly. Okay, it shouldn't take you more than about five or six minutes to do them. Up to here. Okay, now this one is uh, requires you to think about what we just said. 
and, and put it into these words. So what does it say? It says find f of x. So we're trying to find some function. If f of 1 equals negative 1, and, now here's the tricky part, and what? And, well, let's kind of make a picture of this just to make it a little bit more concrete. So, let's say we're, we have some function, right, f, right? And we're trying to find the, the equation for this function f. Okay? You understand? We're trying to find the equation for this function, some function. And it's not just any function, they're telling us something about it, otherwise we couldn't do it. Okay? So, um, what, uh, what are they telling us about f? Do they give us any information about f? Well, actually, they give us, give us two pieces of information. First thing is this. So if you want, we can, use, we can think about what this one means first. So what does this one mean? What does that mean? That means the height when x is equal to 1 is what? It's minus 1. So this is obviously not correct. So maybe I'll at least make it correct in that sense. So at least it has to be go through like when x equals 1 has to go through there. So maybe let's say it looks like this. Okay, at least now it's right according to that one fact. Okay, everyone follow so far? Okay, now, they are telling us more about F though. But it's a little hard to decipher what they're telling us. So what does it say? The tangent line at, so first of all, that's a kind of a weird thing to say. The tan kind of confusing. They said the tangent line at x comma f of x. That's kind of confusing. What do they mean at x comma f of x? What? Or x comma y, that's another way, right? x comma y, that, that helps, that kind of makes it a little simpler. But what do they mean? The tangent line at x comma y, obviously they mean at any particular point, x comma y. So, now, there's two possibilities. If they said the tangent at x comma y is equal to 5, that would mean what? The tangent everywhere is equal to 5. That would mean what? That we have a straight line. If the tangent everywhere is equal to 5, that must be a straight line, right? You can't have, this doesn't have the same tangent everywhere. So if they said the tangent was equal to 5, in other words, if they gave us a number that it was equal to, that would imply that it was a straight line. But the other possibility is, no, they don't do it that way. They, they give us a formula for the tangent. Therefore, the tangent can change depending on what x is. And so that allows us to have a, some other kind of crazy shape, right? Instead of just a straight line. And that's what they told us. They tell us that the slope has, a, the, the tangent line has a slope of what? e to the x plus 9. Therefore, it's not always one thing. It depends on what x is. So therefore, it's changing. The slope is changing. Okay? So that's what they've told us. So now, they, from that, they want you to figure out what f is. That's pretty hard, right? Pretty weird set of information that they gave us from which we're supposed to find out what f is. Let's think about it again. What kind of information have they given us? Well, this one in blue, is pretty simple, right? It's just saying that it goes through the point 1, comma, negative 1, right? That's not so complicated. Okay? But the other thing is pretty weird. They're telling us what? About the tangent 
of, the, of F at every point, right? They're saying, oh, the tan, like for example, when, when x equals one, tell me what is the tangent? It's e to the one, which is e plus nine. That's some number, right? Nine plus e is some number. So that's what the slope happens to be when x equals one, right? That's kind of weird, but anyway, that's what they told us, right? And how about when uh, x equals two? What's the slope there? Well, it's e squared plus nine. That's some other number, right? So not very nice number, but it is a number. So anyway, this, this is telling us the slope at many different places. From that, you're supposed to say to them what f is. Doesn't that sound very hard? Doesn't that sound very hard? Yeah, I think it sounds very hard. You have to think about what we've just been saying, though. You have to think about what we've been talking about. What have we been talking about for, let's see, it's 6.28 now, for the last, what time did we start? 15? So for the last uh, more than 30 minutes, um, what have we been talking about for the last 30 minutes? Well, we've been talking about the indefinite integral, right? What does that have to do with this? Well, what's another word for slope? Because they, they, they mentioned slope in this problem. What's another word for slope? Or what's another, what's a tool that we have to get slope? Derivative, right? Or I could just say another word for slope is derivative, basically. Right? So, we, instead, of them, instead of us thinking that they told us the slope, we can think that they told us what? The derivative. So they've told us, they've told us the derivative of our function. Right? Now what have we just been doing? We said that this is equal to this because the derivative of this is this, right? So this is the derivative and this is the original function. Right? Do you understand? This is the derivative and this is the original function. This is the derivative and this is the original function, right? Uh, it should be what? 6 over 6, right? Okay? So the derivative is here, the original function is here. And they told us the derivative, right? So that is what? Here. Did I get that right? Yeah. So the derivative is here. All right. Derivative is here. Original function is here, right? And they told us what? The derivative. So, they're telling us the derivative is what? And we're trying to find the original function, right? F. So all we have to do is what? Calculate the integral of this function. Okay? It's a little bit, it's more than a little bit tricky, it's tricky, it's hard. It's hard to figure that out the first time. Or even the first 20 times. But anyway, that's what they did, right? So this is not too hard, though, actually. This is easy. What is the answer? E to the x plus 9x plus c. That c is a big problem, though. Because they don't want... It. If you put in c there, you're going to get it wrong. They don't want a, uh, many functions, they want a single function. Okay? But remember, what's the difference between if you put in c equals 1, or c equals 2, or c equals 3? In this case, for example, what was the difference? You just get a shift up or down, right? So all the different answers are going to all be the same shape. They're just going to be shifted up or down. So. Maybe this is the shape, right? So it might look like this one, or it might look like this one, or it might look like this one, right? But we don't know which one it is. Or do we? Or do we? 
Which one of these does it have to be? Number A, B, C, or D? Which one does it have to be? A, B, C, or D? It has to be B. Why does it have to be B? Because that's the one that goes through that point. They did give us another piece of information. What other piece of information did they give us? The thing in blue there, right? Which says what? f of 1 equals negative 1. Now, so somehow we have to use that to figure out what c is. Somehow we have to use that to figure out what c is. Well, what, where's our answer so far? This is our answer, right? So this is our function, right? That's a kind of expression for our function, right or wrong? But, we, but they gave us one more piece of information, the thing in blue. What does it say? f of 1 has to equal, well, let me put it over here, f of 1 has to equal negative 1. But what is f of 1 if I put it into here? What is f of 1? e to the negative 1 plus 9 times negative 1 plus c. Right? Oh, sorry. e to the 1 plus 9 times 1 plus c. So now we have an equation with all numbers except for c. So that should be easy to figure out what c is, right? Right? And then we'll know, then we just put that here, and then we'll know which of these many possible uh, functions it was. If you want, I mean, maybe it's not such a clean number, but still, we can do it. Bring this over to this side, and this over to this side. So we get c equals minus 1, minus e to the 1, which is e, minus 9, right? So that's what? Uh, uh, minus e minus 10, right? Okay, so that's the answer. So that's a kind of a weird number, but that's what c is. Okay, so finally the answer is this plus this plus this weird c. Okay, is that clear? So let's, let's read it one more time just because it was kind of hard. So what does it say? Find f, and then they tell us this one piece of information about f. By the way, in more advanced math co courses, that one kind of piece of information is called a boundary condition. It's because it, it, it kind of gives you a, it, it, uh, there's another word for it also, boundary condition, and I forget. It's also called a constraint. It constrains our answer from having many possible to just one. Um, so it's also called a constraint. It's also called a boundary condition. There's one other word I forgot. Um, but anyway, uh, so anyway, they give us that information, that boundary condition. And then they say, and the tangent line has this equation, or this form. And then you have to think, what, what is, what's another word for, or I'm sorry, the slope has that. Then you have to think, what's another word for slope? Derivative. So they actually told us the derivative. And they're asking us to find the original function from the derivative. And that's the integral question. That's what the integral is, right? When we say, what's the... Uh, integral of this, we're saying find the function whose derivative is this, right? So the derivative is here. I hope I did that right. Did I do it wrong? No, I must have done it right. I'm sorry, this is the derivative and this is the problem. Okay? Is that clear? All right. All right, that was pretty hard. But at least there's a watch it here. Okay. 
Okay, how about this one? How about this one? Is this similar to the previous one? Or not? Is it similar to the previous one or not? It's very similar, right? So they also give us a boundary condition. What's the boundary condition in this one? f of 0 equals 4, or the constraint is f of 0 equals 4. And they tell us what? Again, the tangent line has a slope of 7x. So that means the derivative of the function is 7x. So what's the function? 7 over 2x squared, right? Plus c, and then that boundary condition gets rid of that c, or identifies what c has to be. OK? OK. All right, now another horrible one. OK. Now, we didn't, well, we did, but we didn't. OK, what's the first, what's the second word in this, in problem 14? What's the second word in problem 14? Begins with an M. What? Marginal. Good, you can all read. Okay, what does marginal mean? What, when they say marginal cost, what does your economics teacher mean? Hmm? Yeah, the co well, they usually call it, that's right, but they usually say the cost of an additional item. The cost of one more item. Okay, but how do we approximate that in our class and in general in economics? How do we approximate the marginal cost function? The derivative. The derivative of the cost is the marginal cost. And we talked about that. I gave you a very good reason to accept that. But I'm not going to do it again. Okay, you can go back and look at the video. That's why I have these videos. <laughs> Even though nobody watches them. <laughs> but anyway, at least they're there, so I, I can feel like I put them there, so it's up to you if you want to watch them. But I'm sure you can find it somewhere on the internet anyway, another explanation of it. But anyway, you can certainly look it up, either in another video or just uh, on, at Wikipedia or something, and find that an explanation for why the marginal cost is the derivative of the cost. Okay? Now, they are telling us what? The marginal cost is here, is something, right? They're telling us what the marginal cost is. So therefore, they're telling us what? The derivative of a function, right? Of the total cost function. And what do you think they're going to ask for? Find the total cost function, or they could just call it the cost function, but we can call it the total cost function. So, what do you have to do? Find the integral of this function. That's all. Okay? But, again, you're going to have a C in there. So hopefully they give us a boundary condition or an extra constraint. So let's see if they did that. No. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, yes they did. What's this? The fixed cost is that. That's, a, that's basically another, that will allow you to figure out what C is. Okay? Because fixed cost means what? That's the cost if you do zero. Right? So that's telling you the total cost at zero is 100,000. So that's another boundary condition. Okay? So you should be able to get it. Okay? And then here's another one. 
this one is a, okay. Let me do. Let me just mention this one. It's a little bit confusing the way they write it. So let me mention this one. The idea is the same as what we've just been doing, but the, just the English they use is a little bit weird. So let's look at it. Uh, maybe we won't bother to get the answer, but let's uh, look, just look at it. At the start of 2005, an online social group had one million members. I wonder how many members Facebook had. Was Facebook alive in 2005? Yeah, 2004. 2004. So does it say how many? Well, obviously it's oh, here. Look at that. Oh, already. So in 2008, he had 100 million users. But 2005. So let's read this. On October 1st, 2005, Facebook expanded to 21 universities in the United Kingdom. The blah, 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 in Mexico, around 30 campuses throughout the country at the time. The University of Puerto Rico and the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico network in Puerto Rico and the University of the Virgin Islands, blah, 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 blah. At that time, high school networks required an invitation to join. Facebook later expanded membership eligibility to employees of several companies, including Apple and Microsoft. On December 11, 2000, University in Australia, New Zealand, uh, 2,000 colleges and 25,000 plus high schools. Um, Sorry, it doesn't tell us how many people there were. Well, anyway, there were, well, we don't know. But anyway, all the way, by 2008, they already had 100 million. How many do they have now? 1.2 billion members. Wow. Let's look at the growth rate. Very extreme growth rate here, because it starts with a small number. The growth rate is decreasing, right? But, but of course, growth rate means if, it, if this increased by 1%, how many people would they have added? 120 million, right? So if it just increased by 1%, that means they added 120 million people. Whereas if it, here, that doesn't mean that. Okay, all right. So. Initial funding. It was an LLC in Florida. For the first few months, the cost of the website operation were paid for by him. First angel investor. They got $500,000 in 2004. Okay, that's enough about Facebook for now. All right, anyway, at the start of 2000, oh, this is the same, nearly the same time. Uh, an online social, I wonder if this is Facebook. <laughs> I wonder if they had a million. I can't find the numbers here. Let's see. Do they have a, how about a timeline? this is probably Facebook, right? At the start of 2005, an online social group had one million members. Since that time, new members joined at a rate of roughly this. So what is this telling us? In terms of T, now what does T mean? T is going from where to where? From zero to five. When T is zero, it means 2005. 
Okay, when t is 1, it means 2006. When t is 5, it means 2010. Right? Okay, everyone understand? And what is this function telling us? It tells us the new members, how many new members they're getting. Right? Everyone get it? So how about when t is equal to 0? This is the part that's a little confusing. When t equals 0, what do we get? 20, right? 20 million, but it just told us at 2005 we had 1 million members, right? So that's, that, that confused me the first time I read this. Can anybody explain it for us? They said at 2005 it has 1 million members, but now they say when it's zero, the number of new members is what? Is 20 million, right? So what, is, what, what are they talking about? A little bit weird English, or something's weird. What is it? If they said it was 1 million, how can it be 20 million? So we have to read a little more carefully, I guess. So the new members joined. So this must be at the end of the year. I, that's the only possible explanation, right? So, the, so this is the number of new members that join in 2005. So at the end of 2005, they have plus 20 million. So the total they would have is what? 1 million plus 20 million, right? Okay, so that's kind of weird, but that's what they must mean, right? Okay? So after that, the rest of it is uh, very much related to what we've been talking about. So which part is here? What is this? What is it? Little, first of all, what does little m stand for? Because actually they say capital M stands for what? The total online membership. So little m is different than that. So what does little m stand for? What? Sorry? Okay, marginal. Yeah, I guess marginal or um, or we can also say the increase, right? The increase in members, right? So what is it? what's another word for increase? That's the derivative. Okay, so this is the derivative in this problem. And we're supposed to find this, which is the total. So basically it's the same thing as this one. We were given the marginal cost, and we're supposed to find the total cost. Here we're given the marginal, or the derivative again, and we're supposed to find the total. Okay? So I'm going to leave you to work that one out for homework. Okay? So that is, well, most of everything that we needed to do. Okay, now like I said, we're going to have a quiz. We're going to have two problems in that quiz. We haven't finished yet, so we're not having a quiz yet. Okay, now we have one more section I definitely want to cover before the quiz. And that is this one. This is also homework. This is called Integrals by Substitution. By the way, just to warn you about this quiz, when the quiz begins, you have to spread out. One person at one desk, and nobody sitting in front or in back of anybody else. So nobody should be directly in front of you, or not yet, not yet, you have to do it. But you, have to, you don't have to do it yet. When we finish this section, you have to do it. Okay, you can do it now if you want, but eventually you're going to have to spread out. You don't have to do it now. All right, I'm just warning you, I just want to tell you that in advance so that we can get it done quickly once we start. Okay? All right, anyway, we have one more section to do, and that is this one. 
called Integrals by Substitution. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. So let's look at the example they give us. the function that we're working on here? 2x minus 4 to the 10. And uh, how do we read this? The integral of 2x minus 4 to the 10th. Or, what's the other word for integral? Antiderivative. The antiderivative of 2x minus 4 to the 10th. And to, be, to say it properly, how do we say it? Instead of integral, we should say indefinite integral. Okay, indefinite integral, if you want to say it properly. Okay, now, is the answer going to be a number? No, it's going to be a function. And what function is, do we, is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be the function whose derivative is this. So I want to figure out some function over here, which when I take its derivative, I get that. Right? That's the idea. Now, it's not easy, right? It looks like a really big, really big headache, right? Like, you don't want to even think about it, right? Right. That's why we have this other technique called substitution. So when you get this kind of problem, sometimes you can solve it with this other technique called integration by substitution. Okay? So how does it work? What, how does this trick work, this technique work? So what we do is we have to figure out, we want to say let u equal something. We have to choose like a good uh, thing of u, value for u to be to make this become simpler. Now, to be honest, most of the time if you're given some problem, this won't work. But, uh, you know, these problems in this homework section, of course, they're going to work because they chose the problems that would work. But generally, it just doesn't work. But in this case, it will work. Okay? So let's try it. So the question is, what should we choose u to be? Well, that, you, 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 I don't expect you to say that because you don't even know what the technique is. But I, the, we're, I'm going to try this, that, for u. Okay? I'm going to try that. So if I let u equal that, then if I rewrite this integral, what does it look like? u to the power 10, that looks nice, but this doesn't look nice. What do I mean by that doesn't look nice? Well, most people might give me a quick answer here and say what? It's u to the 11th over 11, right? But that's not right, because that would be the answer if we had this problem, right? That's what we had before. Everything was the same. It doesn't have to be x, but it was all the same. Right? But we don't have that here. So you can't, there's no, there's no rule for this. You can't do that. You can't do that at all. You cannot do that. Okay? So actually, you can't do this until you get all the variables to be the same. Okay? So we have to figure out some way to get all the variables to be the same. And what we end up doing is, this is a kind of a weird trick. It's a trick because if I write this, what's the 
What's another expression for that? Suppose that we have y equals f of x. So I can write it like that. Of course, I could also write it like this. Right? You should agree that these are this, just other. But I can also write it like what? f prime, right? Or f prime of x if you want. Or I can write it like this. So these are all the same thing, right? They're all what? They're all the derivative of f, right? Or the derivative of y, right? So it doesn't make any sense to write some, just that. Right? That's just, this is just this, of course this looks like it's a fraction or a ratio, but the way we've defined it, there's, you know, I can't do that here, right? This is just one thing, it's just a derivative. So it doesn't make any sense to do that. It doesn't make any sense to do that. This is just one symbol. Of course, nobody would have written this symbol like this if they didn't have some idea that you might uh, be able to split it. And actually, the people that uh, originated this notation, anybody know his name? His name was Leibniz. It wasn't Isaac Newton, because Newton originated this notation, and Leibniz originated this notation. They both did it at the same time in different countries. They both invented the same subject. So anyway, Leibniz invent, uses this notation, and he must have, you know, he wouldn't have used this notation if he didn't somehow mean that you could split these up. But in our way of thinking, we cannot split them up. But we do it here anyway, as a kind of a trick, without any justification. Okay? So, what we, we're going to split it up. So what I mean by that is, what, what you do is you calculate du dx, Okay, we didn't split it up yet, but we will in a minute. So you calculate du dx. So here's u. So what is du dx? Well, that's easy. The derivative of 2x is what? 2. Now we split it up. Now we do this trick, which isn't really legal. Okay? So we split it up. So I'm going to bring this up here. Okay? Like that. Now, my goal, what did I say I'm trying to, why, am I, uh, why can't I just do this right away? Because I said we have u's and x's and we can't have that. So my goal is to get this x as some kind of, something to do with u instead. Okay? So I'd like to replace d of x by something. So what am I going to do? I'm going to bring this down here, right? So what do I get? dx is what? du over 2. Now, what can I do? Of course this is, well anyway, so now what can I do? Right? And now I can bring that 2 over here, or that 1 half rather. And now you can do it. Now you can use the rule. What is the rule? u to the 11th over 11 times 2, right? 11, 2 times 11. So the answer is u to the 11 over 22, right? Plus c. Okay, everyone see? Now, I don't want an answer in terms of u, because this was the original problem, right? I just decided to use u to help me get an answer. So I don't want to leave it with u, right? So finally I get what? Finally I get what? U, not u, but what? 2x minus 4. So instead of u, I write what? 2x minus 4. To what power? To the 11 over 22. Okay? Now, 
all of this stuff wasn't really legal. But what am I really trying to get here? I'm trying to find what? The function whose derivative is equal to this, right? So if so, I, let's say I can't really justify all these steps. But I get this answer. So all I have to do is do what? Just check. If I, if, this, if I take the derivative of this and I get this, then I don't care that I you know, use some kind of trick to figure it out. I found the, the function whose derivative is that. Right? So if you take the derivative of this, you will get what we started with. Okay? So it worked. Okay? You understand? Let's try it again. Let's try it again. So let's try this one. Okay, I want to find the antiderivative of that, right? So let's use the same trick again. So what do I do? Substitution. So, because if I try to figure this out in my head, it's really hard to figure out what function has this as its antiderivative. Right? It's pretty hard to figure out. Maybe you can do it, but it's not, not that easy. Okay, so let's use substitution instead. So what do we, we let u equal something out. It's a kind of guess as to what u should equal. But here, what, what anybody want to guess? Okay, so you have to, so you guess and then you try it, to see if it works. So, okay, we guess that. So now we can rewrite this as what? u to the fourth dx, right? And then what? This is no good, right? So then we take, we calculate du dx from here. And what do we get? Pi. And that means that du equals 5 times dx. And that means that dx equals du over 5. Right? And then what do we do? Now we rewrite this as what? I want to clean this up. In other words, by clean it up, I mean get rid of... I don't want to have u's and x's. But now I can replace dx by that. So I get what? u to the 4 du over 5. And then you can do it. And then you replace u with whatever it was in x, and that should work. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, so, so, yeah. So, the, the Why? You, you, I saw you staring at it and looking like it's not the right answer. <laughs> I think it is the answer, yeah. So, so if we find it, yeah, it should work. Okay, let's try it. So, yeah, that's a good idea. Anyway, it's good to check this. So, how do we check that we got the right answer? We take the derivative of this and we're supposed to get the original function, right? Now, how do I take the derivative of this? What rule do I need to, use to do the derivative of this? What? Chain rule. You need the chain rule, right? So what's the outside function here? Remember, in chain rule, we have inside and outside function. What's the outside function? Raising something to the 11th power. What's the inside function? Multiplying by 2. OK? Uh, no, sorry. Multiplying by 2 and subtracting 4. So we, the chain rule says the derivative of the outside function and you put in the inside function. So that's 11 times 2x minus 4 to the 10th over 22. And then times the derivative of the inside function times 2. Okay? Did it work? 
Yeah, hopefully it worked. Okay, so here. Now let's just do one more. So let's suppose you had 3x squared plus 8 to the 7 dx. Okay, so what, did, so what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the function whose derivative is that. Right? Now, thinking about that is not easy. So instead, we're going to use what? Substitution. Now we have to think about what substitution we should make. So anybody want to make a guess? And it's a guess. It's a, basically it's just a guess. It's not like you can know in advance, really. So anybody want to make a guess for let u equal something? Anybody? U equals something. Huh? Oh, oh so I think somebody said this. Okay, maybe. Maybe that would work. Then we would get what? U plus 8 to the 7th dx. Okay, you could try that, but it's not, you're just going to get go in a circle. You're not going to be able to get... The goal is to get everything in terms of U. Okay, and you won't be able to do it. You can try, but you just won't get there. What? What? 3x? 6x for you? No, that won't work either. Uh, no. I don't think that will work. I don't think that will work either. Okay? But it, this is just guessing. Well, this is what you have to do, it's just guess. There's no, you, you just have to guess, try it, and if you can't get it, you have to, you know. And what do I mean by can't get it? If you can't get all, all U's, get rid of all the X's, then it didn't work. Okay? So he guessed this, so you could try it, but I don't think it'll work. Okay? In fact, I don't think this technique will work on this function. It won't work. You won't, there's no guess that will work, I believe. Okay, that's what I said. I said most cases this, this technique doesn't work. Okay? And it won't, I don't think it'll work in this case. Maybe, maybe these guys think that it works and they try it out, it works, I'm not sure. But I, I don't think it does. So there, you can't do this one. At least not that way. Okay, now by the way, people spend many hundreds of years working on different integral problems. Somebody would write their PhD thesis on figuring out a way to do an integral. So it's not like, you know, you're learning all these techniques like, oh, it's just this one and then this one. But, you know, they weren't easy at first. And, you know, now you can go to something called uh, Wolf, uh, Wolfram Alpha and it'll, and it'll just crank it out for you. Okay? But, um, but as I said, people wrote their whole, you know, might spend eight, ten years trying to do one integral. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that they're just easy. And this one, I don't know what the answer is. Okay? What, what I mean is that, what do I mean I don't know what the answer is? I don't know which function it is that you take the derivative of it and you get this. Right? I don't know the answer to that. Okay, but suppose I change the problem to this. I think it, something will work in this case. Okay, this is just a different problem. I think this one I know the answer to. I know what substitution to make. Okay? So you might not, of course, you don't know which one, but I think this will work. U equals 3x squared plus 8. So let's check it and see if that works. So, what, what's the next step? Rewrite this what? As x times... I'm sorry, I meant that. Sorry, I forgot the 7. Okay, so x u to the 7 dx, right? 
Of course, that's not good because we have to get only one variable, not two. Okay, so we're going to try and get rid of the x. So how did we always do that? We said, consider du dx. Right? So what is du dx? What is du dx? 6x, right? Okay, now what are we, again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to clean this up. So we're trying to get rid of the x's. So in particular, I'd like to at least get rid of the dx. Okay, so what should I do? Move this over here and move that down there, right? So I can, I'll do that in one step this time. I did it two steps before. So dx comes up here and this goes down there. So I get what? That, right? Now what? It just so happens that what? That this x is going to cancel this one. Right? Now I knew that when I made that problem. So, uh, so that's, you know, but as I said, if I didn't have this here, I don't think we could do it. Okay? But, but since I put that there, now we can rewrite this like what? x, u to the 7, dx is what? du over 6x. Our goal is to get rid of, to, our goal is to have only u's. Can we get there? Yeah, easily, right? This x cancels with that. We get 1 6 u to the 7 du. Okay, and then you can do the integral of that. What is it? u to the 8 over 8 times 6, right? And then replace, right? What's the integral of this? u to the 8 over 8 times 6, or in other words, over 48. And then, and then just replace u by this, and you're supposed to have the answer. Okay? And that's called, what is this called again? Integration by substitution. What's the substitution? We make a substitution here, right? And then we try and do it. Okay? Okay, just one more thing. And that is... Uh, one more thing, sorry. These are called the limits of integration. The limits of integration. These are called the limits of integration. And now this problem is completely different than before. What I mean by completely different is, before, did we get a number or uh, a function? Before, did we get a number or a function? We got a function, right? In fact, we didn't even get a function. We got even something even less definite than that. We got what? We got actually a family of functions, right? Because we had a C. So we didn't even get just a single function. We got many functions. But here, this is different. Here, you get a number. Okay? So this is different. You're going to get a numeric answer. Okay? So what is the answer? The answer is... You, the answer is like this. You just do what we just did, that, and what is that, by the way? x cubed over 3, and then you could say plus c, but the c is going to disappear. But anyway, the answer is x cubed plus over 3. So you just do that, and then all you do is you put 2 into that. So x cubed over, what is it again? x cubed over 3, right? So if you put 2 into that, what do you get here? 8 over 3, right? 
And if you put 1 in, what do you get? 1 over 3. So all you do is you calculate the antiderivative of this, then you put in 2, and you put in 1, and you subtract the difference. You subtract the 2. So again, what do I get when I put in 2 into here, into the antiderivative? 8 over 3. What do I get when I put in 1? 1 over 3. What's the difference between 8, of, 8 over 3 and 1 over 3? 7 over 3. This is going to be 7 over 3. Okay, let me say it again. What do you do? You calculate the antiderivative of the function, and then you do this. So the antiderivative was this, right? Now we can write this, by the way. You can also write this. What does this mean? It means put in 2 in here, put in 1 in here, and subtract them. That's what this notation means. Put in 2, put in 1, and subtract them. So let's do that. So what do I get? 8 over 3 minus what? 1 over 3. So that's 7 thirds. Okay? Or if you want to rewrite it like this, you could say that this equals this. Why? Because what, how do we use this notation? We put it in front of, or I guess I should say after, we put it after a function, right? And then it tells us put the top into the function, put the bottom into the function and subtract it to, right? So we put this after a function, right? So am I putting it after a function here? Yeah, this is a function, right? So we, put, we calculate that function, then we put two into it, then we put one into it and subtract them. Okay? Everyone get it? Now, so what? That's kind of weird. What, you know, where did that come from and who cares about it? Okay, here's where it comes, here's why we care about it. Suppose I give you this problem. What was the function? x squared, right? Suppose I draw the x squared function. Right, this is y equals x squared. And I ask you, What's the height here, by the way? When x equals 1, what's the height? 1. And how about when x equals 2, what's the height? This is x squared, right? So what's the height? 4. Right? Okay? I'm going to agree with that. Okay, ready? Suppose I give you this function and I ask you, what's the area in here? How many people can do that? Nobody can do it, right? It doesn't look doable, right? Everyone understand? What's the area under there? Now, what, we just did this problem. What, 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 what was the answer we got? Seven thirds. That is the area under here. The area under there is seven thirds. Okay? How about if I wrote this? What is, that, what is that going to be the area under? It's the same curve, it's still x squared. It's the area from where to where? From 0 to 1. Let's calculate it. What is it? What's the area in here, in this region here? So how do we do it? We take the antiderivative, which was what? x cubed over 3, and we put in 1 and we put in 0 and subtract them. So if I put in 1, what do I get? 1 third. And if I put in 0, what do I get? Minus 0. The answer is 1 third. What's the area here? It's 1 third. Now, how about this rectangle? What's the area of that rectangle? What's this length? 1. What's this height? 1. What's the area of the rectangle? 1. What's the area of this region? It's less than one, of course, right? It's in fact one third. Okay, it's also less than a half. A half would be there, right? Okay? So it's one third. That's the actual area. Now who cares? Why do you care what the area under that curve is? Well, I could have asked you the same thing. Why do you care 
what the slope of the tangent line is. But we spend a lot of time giving reasons why you could care. For example, the marginal cost is calculated, or the velocity can be calculated, or the acceleration can be calculated. In the same way, there are going to be many, many examples of why you could use this or where you could use this. But mathematically or geometrically, it's what? It's the area under the curve. That is, I'm sorry, this is the area under the curve. I forget, what's the equation for a circle? Isn't this the equation for a circle? I'm sorry. Isn't that the equation for a circle? That's a circle of radius 3. The square root of this is the radius. That's a circle of radius 3. Solve this for y. No, no, let's not do that. Let's do one that you know. Oh, sorry. Here, here, here. Let's do this. What, do you know the area under here? The height is 3, 1 to 4. Do you know the area? What? Of course you do, right? What's, this, what's the length here? 3. And what's the height here? 3, so it's the area of the rectangle. 3. Let's do it using our new way of doing it. So we're not talking about a curve like this. I'm talking about a straight line for the curve. So what's the equation for that uh, curve? Just y equals 3, right? Okay? So I want to do what? Write, tell me what to write to express the area under this. The integral of what function? 3 dx, right? 3 is the height. That's the function. And from where to what? From where to where? 1 to 4. Let's see if we get 9. Right? Oh, 4. Let's see if we get 9. So do this. How do we do this? We have to find the antiderivative of 3. What is the antiderivative of 3? Three? 3x, right? Right, 3x from where to where? From 4 to 1. What does that mean? Put 4, oh wait. Yeah, that's right. Put 4 in there, what do you get? 3 times 4 is 12. Minus 3 is 9. What did we say the area should be? 9. What did we get? 9. Okay, this does work. Okay? It does work. Okay, now we only have a few minutes. So now is the time when you have to do anti-Facebook, anti-social. means you have to sit far away from everybody else. So you should not be able to see anybody else's paper. That's the test. So you have to sit so far away from everyone else that you cannot, that nobody can see you, and you can't see anybody. Nobody can, so you shouldn't sit in front of anybody, or behind. Nobody can see you, and you can't see anybody. Nobody can see you, and you can't see anybody. There's a lot of spaces over here. You can spread out more. help us out here by making people spread out, like especially that group over there.
in there. Those guys are, are all too close. All of those guys, too close. The, the sooner you guys move, the quicker everybody can leave. You guys, in the back corner there, all of you. You're all too close. All of you. There's space over there. There's a corner space over there. There's a table over here. You guys are too close. Move. The quicker you move, the sooner we, everybody can leave. The slower you move, the longer everybody has to wait. If you're finished, you raise your hand, somebody can come and get your, your uh, sheet, and uh, you can go. But it'll take a little time for, for the TAs to come and get your sheet. So be patient. TAs only have two feet.
I say I changed it, then I have to. I can't change back. <laughs> 